Hello, and welcome to the Integrated Rehab and Performance Podcast. My name is Dr. Nick Curtis, and I'm running the show here at the Integrated Rehab and Performance Center. Today, we have another nutrition and functional medicine-related podcast. This is kind of nutrition part two. After we calculate our total energy expenditure, like we did in the first episode, now we want to take those uh, those numbers, again, not an exact science by any means, and start to break that down into more specific macronutrient breakdowns. Okay, and so we'll talk some percentages and then just certain guidelines for deciding where to start, how many grams of protein, carbohydrates, and fats we should be aiming for, and the calorie percentage that uh, makes up our total calorie expenditure. Okay, so again, last episode we talked about calculating TEE or total energy expenditure, and we can either include the thermal effect of food or kind of disregard it. Now, again, that was calculating. Uh, basal or resting metabolic rate, multiplying that by a certain uh, factor, physical activity factor, right? So if we're relatively sedentary or we're doing a little bit of work, maybe we like to go for some walks or some yoga, or we're a little bit more intense doing an hour of resistance training or intense still, or maybe that's an hour of CrossFit and then versus a very intense CrossFit athlete or endurance athletes, which uh, have, again, different levels of physical activity and that uh, multiplier that, that kind of correlates with that. So it is, again, not, not an exact science, but it gives you a general idea. And then from there, you can multiply that number by 0 0.10 to just give you a little, it throws in an additional extra few calories or a couple hundred calories that we would say would be the thermal effect of food, which is just the energy it takes to break down food right and so we take that we get that number and then we add it back to that resting metabolic rate multiplied by that physical activity factor so we can disregard that if you feel like it again it's not exact science so we can pretty much use the uh, the error and the first calculation to account for that thermal effect of food pretty much okay and then we can go from there so we have our total calories that um, fit what our kind of how much energy we're burning each day and then we get to make the choice for our energy or calorie goal based on do we want to gain some weight do we want to make sure that we're putting on muscle or are we looking to lose a little bit of weight or we're looking to lose a lot of weight or we're looking to maintain performance while attempting to lose weight or we're looking to gain muscle while losing fat and this will all kind of influence whether you um, take that total energy expenditure number and add some additional calories to it or take some away, right? And that will give you your goal, your daily goal, right? And uh, we need to really take some time to think about what that number will be. And then again, uh, experiment and, and find the, the appropriate number over a course of, of some weeks and maybe even a month or two to really see how the body is responding to certain numbers and your activity level. Okay, and so today we're gonna work on calculating our general macronutrient goals that we're going to break our calories into. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's start with protein. Now there's an important order to this and you will see um, a couple different versions of it out there, but I think this is probably the most solid way of getting a general breakdown of your macronutrients that will um, for an athlete or any exerciser who's looking to maintain muscle mass and even improve muscle mass and performance, I'd say this is a good first step is to focus first on the protein, right? So we're trying to find how many grams of each macronutrient we want to consume each day um, based off, first of all, goals. And then we have a total amount of calories that we're able to consume, right? Uh, where we don't want to overdo it too much. So I would say start with protein. And for our numbers here, Generally, they have a pretty broad range where you can go anywhere from 1.2 to 2.4 or even 2.6 uh, grams per kilogram of body weight, right? And so 2.2 grams per kilogram breaks down to about one gram per pound of body weight. And I'd say that's about where we should stick at. Um, most uh, research papers will say, listen, if you're getting 2.2 grams per kilogram or a, a, or a gram per pound of body weight, then you don't really need to worry too much about uh, the timing of the protein or anything like that. You are getting enough protein that your body will be able to use um, and it will put you in the right direction if you're doing enough in terms of total calorie uh, count and uh, productivity in the weight room. 
right? So if you're doing those two things and you're getting a gram per pound of body weight, then you are covered, right? So that simplifies things for us. So I'd say shoot anywhere for 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight where we're getting, um, so if you're a 160 pound athlete, pretty much it's 140 to about 160 grams per day, right? And if you're shooting for that 2.2 and you get you kind of come up short, right? Because it's, it's a pretty tough goal to hit. Uh, and you end up in that 140 mark. You're, again, I think you're looking pretty pretty good in terms of total uh, protein intake for that day, right? And so this gives us a safe uh, target goal that will make sure we are getting uh, certainly enough variety of protein and we are getting um, enough quantity of protein to do what we need it to do in terms of performance, put it on muscle. But again, all those other important uh, roles that protein plays in the body and all the different well, proteins that protein will make in the body, right? So important, I'd say 2.0 to 2.2, maybe even to 2.4. If you're somewhere in that range, you are looking good. You don't have to worry too much about your timing of protein or anything like that. You are covered. So again, protein, we want to make sure we are calculating based off our needs. And we're going to do the same thing with fat here. So with fat, we, there's some percentage marks we want to make sure we're staying within but we want to first calculate based off vital bodily needs pretty much, right? So fat, we want to make sure we're not dropping below 15% of our total calories from fat. Uh, research has shown that if we are getting less than 15% of our calories from fat, we are potentially limiting our body's ability to produce vital structures in the body. So one thing being hormones that require fat for hormone production, and then two, and a big one here is cells. And uh, the cell membranes contain a high portion of fat. And so we need fat available to repair and create cells um, and even cholesterol as well, which plays a vital role in the cell membrane and its function. So we do not want to drop below 15% of total calories from fat. And instead, we want to stay somewhere between that 15 to 25-ish, maybe even 30% uh, calories from fat. But first, let's not worry about that. Let's just calculate based off our very specific uh, body, right? So we're going to go off pounds here and aim from on the low end 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight or 0.5 grams per fat um, of fat per body weight per pound of body weight. So 160 pound athlete times 0.3, that is 48 grams of fat total for the day. And if we multiply that by nine, uh, that's 432 calories from fat. Okay, so just some quick calculations here. If we take 48 grams of fat, multiply that by 9, we get 432 calories. Now remember, this is on the low end. This is at 0.3 grams per pound of body weight. Now if we take 432 calories and divide that by 2650, which is this athlete's kind of minimum goal uh, calorie mark, we get 16%. So that's just above that 15% uh, that we don't want to drop below. So it is very much on that low spectrum. I'd say maybe we can aim a little bit higher. So let's go to the higher end, which is uh, 0.5. So if we take 160, we multiply that by 0.5, we get 80 grams, um, which would be their, cal or their grams per fat goal. If we take 80 and multiply that by 9, that's 720 calories from fat. Now if we divide that by 2650, that is 27% of total calories from fat, right? So that's good that those numbers, those ranges, which uh, make sure that we're getting enough fat for vital functions as well as um, energy production and, uh, and repair, is, tends to be a pretty good range. So 0.3 to 0.5, and again, find somewhere that um, after maybe manipulating these numbers for a couple days, we find, or sorry, a couple weeks, we find which percentage or grams a fat goal is, is really working the best for us and we stick there. So I'd say that 25% range seems pretty good. So maybe 0.45 uh, grams of fat per pound of body weight would do this athlete pretty good. All right. And so that's how we calculate that. So let's choose that. Um, in this case, let's just choose that higher end where we are consuming that at 27%, which was, let me just double check this here. That's 80 times nine. That's 720 calories. We were taking 640 from protein. That gives us 1,300 calories um, from fat and protein, so 1,360. Now from here, let's just subtract from our goal, which was the 2,650, and minus 1,350. And that leaves us 1,300 calories for, uh, for carbohydrates. 
right? And if we divide that by four, that's 325 grams of carbs per day, okay? And so that's why we do carbs last. We wanna really nail the protein. We wanna make sure we're on the high end of the protein. We wanna make sure we have our fat locked in, again, very specific to our body and our body needs. And then from there, we have the left rest over for carbohydrates. And again, we just can double check these numbers and make sure that it's not uh, skewed uh, too much one direction. Now, if you're an endurance athlete, you might want actually 60% of your uh, calories from carbs, unless you're a keto, right? But if you're a typical endurance athlete, or maybe a very high, high end, uh, high production athlete, maybe you want to skew these numbers a little bit more towards a higher carb content. Um, in which case, we'll start to have to change things. But again, as a general rule, do your protein first, shoot for that two two uh, grams per kilogram to the 2.4 grams per kilogram and then lock that in and then do your fat aim between 0.3 grams per pound 2.5 grams per pound and then the rest should be about um, what you need for carbohydrates so this is how we get our uh, start to macronutrient goals now there is specific goals uh, derived for your activity level from carbohydrates as well so we could do a very more specific uh, breakdown of macro of the carb macronutrient based off your activity level and body weight um, and there's been some research done through there as well but again I'd, I'd rather focus on protein and fat first and then leave the rest left over for carbs but again, we could reverse the order here and uh, go from there especially if you're an endurance athlete this might be the way to do it where you start with the carbs and uh, they, they aim for anywhere from six to ten grams per uh, per pound of body weight I believe or sorry kilogram of body weight and that's how they derive how much carbohydrates they're eating that day and it's quite a bit right so anywhere from six to ten if they're up towards that eight to ten range on the on the higher end um, be a lot of carbs <laughs> consumed per day right but there's certain athletes that need that um, i'd say for your general athlete or exerciser what we broke down here today is a is a great first step and uh, gives us room to tweak things as we move along okay so thanks for sticking with me here. A lot of numbers, uh, calculations here. But again, this is kind of step two after we calculate our total energy expenditure. And then we uh, try to create some room based off our goals. Are we going to add some calories to that? Are we going to take some calories away from that? And then that gives us our calorie goal. And then we break those total calorie goals down by macronutrients where we just find out how many grams of protein we want, find out how many grams of fat we want, multiply those to get how many calories we're consuming from those two, and then subtract that from our total calorie goal to get calories from carbs, divide that by four to get grams of carbs per day, right? And those will give us our three big macronutrient goals that is uh, specific for athletes and exercisers and making sure we are hitting our, our numbers when it comes to uh, protein especially, okay? So thank you very much for listening. This is the second functional medicine and nutrition podcast and uh, expect some more coming down the line here. We will get into kind of more specific topics where maybe we'll break down uh, macronutrients specifically for endurance runners. Uh, we'll break down some nutrient timing, things like that, um, hydration stuff, and then we'll dive into the micronutrients and uh, supplements for for athletes and exercisers to make sure that we're leveraging this field as best as we can for performance and for recovery. All right. So this is Dr. Nick. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.